Hey, welcome back to Coding Your Weird Roblox Ideas. We're gonna start out by uh, this comment right here saying, uh, now how do I connect it so that each time I press the button, one coin will be added? This was with the uh, leaderboard video. So we'll get right on that. So first of all, we're obviously gonna need a script for this because we're scripting, right? Now, every time a player gets added, this function gets fired. This will create the leaderboard shown in the video previously. Now, mind you, the system I'm making right now does not save the actual data. It just kind of fires it in there. Look at that, coins. Perfect. Now, we want the coins to be added, so let's make a system for that. I'm gonna make a button. Alright, now having the button, we need a client script to communicate with the server. Now, this is gonna be pretty easy. It's just gonna reference the button. Now, this is gonna be pretty easy. It's just gonna reference the button. Add a little remote event here. Now we're firing the server every single time we want the coin to be added. Be careful with this. This is the kind of stuff exploiters exploit. There are better ways of doing this, and in no way should you link this up to the client, but if you have no other choice, this is the way to do it. Moving on, we need to connect up the actual event here. So right in here, and then again, I'm saying this with 100% knowing I'm about to do it. Usually I wouldn't place a, an event connection inside of another event connection. This will create multiple event connections and will be bad for performance. But in this case, to make it quicker and to make it more to make more sense and have a little less code, we're gonna put it inside. So every single time the button is clicked, it fires the event. Every single player that has joined the game now checks, oh, is this me, right? And then increments the value. Now, starting the game should look like this. And you can see every single time I click, it adds coins. Perfect, one done. I'm moving the button to the side and we're moving on. Now we've got this second one. When you press W, something random gets unanchored and it doubles every time you press W. Well, I'm, I mean, doubles? A 1% chance that you get unanchored? Man, you are already unanchored. There's, you're already, that's kind of the character. You're not, there's nothing anchored on you. So I'm gonna remove that last part and we're just gonna spawn in something random here. Okay, welcome to your mother's house. Let's see what we can do about this. So we're gonna take this model and call it target. We're once again gonna hop into our local script and in here, we're gonna create a new line. There are usually a, a few different ways of doing this, but this is the way we're doing it today. The user input service. Okay, so let's say there's an input somewhere. Some, somewhere, I guess. This will trigger. Triggering this event and anchoring something. Now we need the server side code for this. So we're gonna be receiving that signal. We're then gonna define the target. We're gonna make an empty array of target parts. And then we're gonna collect all of the target parts from the target and put them into the target parts. Yes, that is makes a lot of sense. And like so, we now have all the targets that can be unanchored getting in here. So first, we're gonna have to make a little uh, edit to the client side. I just noticed I forgot to check if this input was actually um, at like at W when you click W. If input dot key code is equal to enum dot key code dot W. So if it is a W that's being clicked, and input dot in uh, state. Equals you enum that user input state dot begin. We're just switching the entire thing around. So if it says if the input is not equal to W or the input input state is not equal to begin, then we return. Basically, we get so that it's only when we're clicking W and it's only when we are. Excuse me. All right. I simply switched two symbols around. No problem. So heading back to the server side. Every single time this thing is triggered, it'll find a random part number. Find a random number between one and however many target parts are in there. Find a random part with that number and promptly unanchor it. Now, I don't want this to break. I don't want this to get messy. So I'll add a debounce, like so. This little segment up here to make sure that it never actually runs twice at the same time. And then down here to make sure that it also resets in the end. Now, let's not forget the important part of removing the, the, the target part from the array now that we're at it. And as a matter of fact, we can make this even easier and even shorter if I just take this and move it up here. That's the code done. Let's see how it works. Well, it doesn't work because I made a typo. Let's try that again. The house is falling apart. Can I push the walls yet? No. Look at this. Windows are falling apart. What have you done? Look at this. This is beautiful. For your information, I'm clicking the W key way more than I would normally, but I want to see this house fall apart. And apparently I've chosen a house with way too many parts. Oh, there goes the floor. Now, this actually seems like a pretty fun game. Uh, just saying. For anyone who wants to make an actually competitive version of this, um, send me a link to your completed game in the description, or sorry, in the in the comment section. And yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it for today. Uh, for the lack of better lighting, here we go. 
Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Enjoy!